Welcome to Awaken Within. I'm your host, Skylar Shelton. Our in-studio guest is Rachel Kirkland, known online for her spiritual practice as the modern shaman. Ms. Kirkland offers shamanic and psychic services to clients who seek healing and spiritual growth, including modalities to practice the art of extrasensory perception to her students. She offers in-person and Skype sessions for mentoring, shamanic healing, soul retrievals, unique psychic readings, past live visions, remote viewing, channeling, mediumship, medical intuition, and energy chakra clearing. Although she has a master's degree in education, it is her many years of direct experience with the metaphysical, paranormal, and psychic realms which have motivated her to create a personal curriculum to help others with their spiritual gifts. She is a true master teacher shaman with a sincere heartfelt desire to facilitate personal growth and transformation to all of those who cross her path. I hope you guys enjoy this interview. It was a ton of fun to do. And with that, let's welcome Rachel Kirkland. Like and subscribe. So I'm Rachel Kirkland, um, and I go by the Modern Shaman. That's my business name. And a lot of what I do now involves a lot of instruction and training others that are wanting to do this path. I also um, offer a kind of open sense of connection in terms of healing and ancient seer uh, abilities, which today would be called a psychic, but um, in, in terms of the ancient sacred intuitive arts, it was just part of a little bit of what a shaman did. Uh, many people kind of throw that term around, but um, I use myself as a sense of bridge for so many different avenues, basically from the non-physical realm into the physical realm and just allow that sense of connection in whatever ways that my clients or the ones that I'm mentoring or working with uh, need guidance, whatever way is helpful for them, whether it be from the physical form and the physical body and working through healing or trauma, um, or whether it is a traditional sense of psychic seership, whether it's past life, future projections, all sorts of things. So mediumship, we go in a lot of different directions. I'm probably the most open-minded individual that you'll ever meet. I've seen a lot of things. So nothing really freaks me out. I'm very open and grounded um, in my approach to kind of connecting with the other side and just making it a sense of um, absolute connection for all of us. Awesome. I teach psychic development and I teach um, like a, a program, but it's so, it's such a paradox in terms of a way of teaching because it's like, it's, it's completely unteaching in a way and yeah. learning how to recognize what is already in you and validating that voice, that awareness, those images beyond mm -hmm. the traditional academia of like, we're going to scaffold your learning and you're going to learn this and then this and, and we're going to bridge to this sense of, you know, accolade that you grow and you get the certificate at the end. That doesn't mean anything when it comes to this work, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you can have a million different degrees, but there's... And that type of education is very different from the way that um, we learn uh, from our intuitive gifts. I mean, it's, it's essentially the opposite for me. It kind of yeah. has to find a sense of balance in developing. Mm -hmm. One of the ways I like to look at it is um, there are there's adding things to you, and then there's chiseling away, um, adding things I to you. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that um, you become hungry to add to you is almost like adding to the ego. It's piling on. And then uh, you perhaps are the already perfected creation of all that is within you. And so perhaps it's like chiseling away at a statue to reveal who you are underneath all of this. You know, it's like unlearning, like you said, it really is, um, you know, uh, like that. That's at least what I discover uh, in kind of meditative states is a, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, a letting go, a lightening 100%. up. <laughs> yes, yes. But there's such an, it's a tricky thing to teach. And then <laughs> yeah. academic, you know, setting where we're like in a class or in a, in a video module and I'm trying to teach through the steps. And yet I have to remind people every time there's a preface to it to say, hey, if you start getting information from the divine or you start seeing visions, pay attention. That's not the stuff that you, <laughs> that you drop in order to focus on the teacher in that moment. This is what we're trying to develop. But we're so used to putting aside our visions, putting aside um, our intuitive hits or knowing and feeling like we devalidate them and don't have confidence on that level. And so that the trust has kind of been broken by our traditional um, academic setting. And learning to 
bring information in that feels kind of forcive and coercive in a way. It's very, very different. Yeah. I, you also touched upon one of the things in which I think is uh, really a um, perhaps what stifles people's development for maybe more than anything else. And that is, um, you know, at a young age, you stated, you know, you were having these experiences, these visions. um, Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes me wonder, you know, uh, how many people out there are having these things, but they don't have any frame of mind in which to understand these. Like you mentioned, you're like, you're hearing all this terminology. You were being, they were languaging all your experiences. Uh, You had Mm -hmm. a, a way to experience to really, really put into a human understanding what it is that you were experiencing so that it became, you could expand upon it. There was something foundational to that languaging to build upon that was stable and steady and usable in a, you know, in a 3D human earthy world. And uh, I, I, I assume, is, are your uh, classes a bit like that? Do you find that you also have a lot of people who are just like, oh, well, I always thought I was crazy. My parents disowned me. Like, I just Absolutely. don't fit in. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and it ranges, but typically the more gifted or acute, more specific the imagery, more specific the sensation, the psychic senses. Uh, if you're clairsentient, that's the feeling of non-physical energy. So a lot of people... and when they're on the extreme form of the spectrum, um, may feel others' emotions, feel um, like I can't watch scary movies. I can't watch, I can't, I can't, I I move straight into a sense of melding with the experience, but it's interesting. (laughs) But anyways, it's another change I was going to say. It's interesting when I did missing person work because I was going in and out of, you know, murderers' bodies all the time to to get behind their eyes and see the murder weapon or see, go through the scene and the sequencing and see what played out. So it was a common experience, but at the same time, I had a lot of psychic boundaries set up for a sense of emotional distance or um, letting go of the memories after the session. You have to learn how to set up a sense of psychic boundaries. But I think that that, um, getting back to your original point, is incredibly common. And I think that's the biggest thing that I hear is people saying like, oh my gosh, I've always been this way, but I never knew what that was. or I never had a language for it. And so the context... I think it is a lot of people just peace of realizing that, yeah, they're not crazy. I think people reach out to either the psychiatric community or they go towards psychology and they, they try to understand the process of their life, understand what's going on in terms of the blend of the mind and the body and the soul and all of this. And so we have a lot of academic understanding, but a lot of times we don't have any, any valid form of like connecting that through the parapsychology or, or the psychic realm. And, and when we say psychic, we've just done ourselves such a sense of disservice because it's so over sensationalized. And it's like you in the media and, you know, like anytime somebody gets a vision, they're like going into a convulsive, you know, like, like freaking out, like, Oh my God, you know, they're like getting some sort of crazy. It's never like that. It's like a super flash of the mind. I mean, it happens all the time. Somebody's talking about a poodle and you're seeing an image of a poodle and it's like, but you don't validate like, oh, that could actually be their poodle. Maybe they do have a little bracelet or a little necklace that has, says Chimmy Chi or something, <laughs> but you don't yeah. ever stop to say, does your dog actually have this thing? You know what I mean? And so we're not actually utilizing all of our sense of connection and form, but I see that often with people with classes. Yeah. That's the first thing. They're just like, wow, I finally feel like I have a language to explain um, what I've always been experiencing. It's a huge relief. I think for most people and they feel like they're not alone or they're not, um, they're not, they're not disassociating with the sense of the mind and the psychology Mm. of it. Mm -hmm. And and we're given a frame of mind right up front, pop culture, you know, before, you know, anyone ever gives us a frame of mind, we're being told, you know, you you have, of course, you know, a lot of, you know, fear porn, you know, on the news 24 seven, like, be scared, be scared, you're gonna die, everything's ending, go, you know, (laughs) even before this pandemic, it's just so frequently that and you know, you hear it's like, uh, you know, on, on our pop culture movies and Hollywood and everything like that, you know, and uh, people, I could see people almost being guilted into believing that they are crazy, you know, to, yeah. to almost, and so like, like kind of earlier, you know, unlearning, and so they, they can relearn a language, you know, it's like bumping mm-hmm. around in um, sort of like a, uh, like, a, I can only imagine if we 
didn't really understand, or, or even before we understood whole entire sciences, like, you know, our science of our diets, our science of our, um, of our uh, electrical technology and stuff like that, going around in life, um, just sort of bumping around in a, like a social, social, like Brownian motion, you know, like true mm-hmm. randomness. And mm-hmm. we're just like, we don't have any way to contextualize this stuff. And so, you know, in older cultures and societies, we may like attribute it to like, uh, the stars, like, you know, or we had prayed yeah. to this God or something like yeah. that. And it's like, there was something there, but we didn't understand it. So like, yeah, you know, what a sense of understanding. And, um, you know, it makes me wonder, I, I'd be curious to hear your perspective on, you know, why do you think our current mainstream culture, our current paradigm that we live in um, is so, is it, is, is it fearful? Like we, you know, we're so used to being in fear and it can feel good to be a victim because then we can feel like perhaps nothing is our responsibility and nothing's our fault. But if we give mm-hmm. away our energy, then we give away the ability to love ourselves, to come in communion with ourselves. It's like a double-edged sword. It's like, mm-hmm. well, uh, now I feel like I get away from murder, but now all of everything has to come from outside, you know, including love. And my, um, I, I almost see it like, like a, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's the other side to it too, where it's like, you know, if, if you want to subjugate and control a group of people, like as like a, I could, a, you know, overbearing entity, you know, you can't have people communing with spirit directly. You can't have people <laughs> believing with them themselves. That's not how you control mm-hmm. a group of people. You gotta, mm-hmm. you gotta divide and conquer. You can't have, that's a direct connection to like all that is, that is source. That is like, nah, that's, that's no good. Then people will start realizing that, you know, that same energy that beats your heart is the same energy that is bringing you love, that is bringing you, you know, every, that, 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 that is moving the machinery of nature in a way that is in accordance with who you are and your desires and your wishes and stuff like that. So I would love mm-hmm. to hear like, why, why, how did we get ourselves all twisted up uh, when it comes to this sort of thing in our mainstream culture? <laughs> 